Hey guys, I have a little experiment to uh, explain to you. <clears throat> it worked. <laughs> first, game, let me give you a little bit of background. Um, when I when I first started, well, for the first you know two years of being on the streets collecting cans and bottles, all hours of the day or night, I was wearing a black cap, like a black baseball cap, basically all black. I have to admit, oh, you've probably seen me wear it. Um, and I have to admit, it kind of made me look a little tough. And nobody bothered me for two years. Um, at the beginning of last summer, I uh, I thought I'd make a little change because I felt a lot less dark on the inside and a lot more recovered. So I started to wear a baseball cap that was white. And uh, pretty soon I realized people were messing with me. Guys were... were, were were messing with me, like the psychopaths, narcissists, and troublemakers, the dr even just the drunk kids, you know, they were interacting with me. Not always negatively, but before I was left alone. Now, it didn't take me long to think, it's got to be the hat, because when I see guys in white baseball caps, they look like pussies. And when I see a guy in a black baseball cap, they look pretty freaking scary, like they could be a cop or something, or, or a hitman. So, uh, so I went back to the black cap, and no one bothered me again. Um, last month, uh, one, one of the guys I know who does the same job told me that someone gave him uh, 20 bucks and 50 bucks and all this money, cash, uh, over the Christmas season. Like, people saw him collecting cans and bottles in the garbage they felt bad for him and they gave him money and I and I heard that not just from him I've heard that from many many people over the years who do the same thing that you know people feel bad for them or whatever you know people just want to donate to the cause so they stop them and give them money and I've always been like what the hell man no one ever stops me to give me money it's happened a few times uh, at the beginning someone offered me two bucks I took it I think someone gave me, oh yeah, one guy gave me five bucks in the middle of the winter. He was like a sharp-dressed man and saw me in the garbage. He came out of his office building and gave me a five. And boy, did that make me happy. I really needed it at that time. But really nothing like any, everybody else. Everybody else seems to be getting handed, you know, cash left, right, and center. And uh, and we're not, we're not panhandlers. We're not the kind of people to beg. So, you know, it's not like we expect it. But when I was hearing some of these guys are giving, you know, 50 bucks, I'm like, whoa, what the hell are you doing right and I'm doing wrong? And of course, then I quickly realized, wait a second, ever since I've gotten myself together, I look too clean. You know, I would be clean shaven. My jacket was uh, the one I spoke about in my last video, a really nice jacket. So I didn't look very needy. So I said, you know, let me, let me do an experiment. I said, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. It wasn't about the money. You know, I don't need the money. But I said, let's see if that's it. Um, it's the winter time. It's going to be snowy. It's going to be disgusting. Let's do the experiment, because I love experiments. I love research. I love experiments. I love spying. And I love learning what human motivations and, you know, everything we talk about on YouTube psychology so uh, at the beginning of um, well, when Christmas came around and I saw all these snowstorms arriving I decided you know what I'm just gonna let myself go so I have not shaved since uh, Christmas and here's the real kicker I have not taken a shower since Christmas so that's basically close to a month there's but a month that's something I never, I've never used to do before, but when I first went PTSD insane, when I first discovered everything, I went, I think, six months without taking a shower. And my teeth were black. And they're not bad, I still have a little bit. But my God, I was really, really uh, messy. So it's been now a month, and guess what? I can call the, uh, the experiment a success. I'm gonna take a shower now and shave, because last night, some dude stopped me and gave me 20 bucks. Oh, and, and a few days before, someone tried to give me like three bucks. 
I thanked her very much, but I didn't take it because she didn't look like she could really afford it. And I, I really didn't need the money anyways. Three bucks is not going to make a difference in my, in my day. And, you know, I told her to give it to someone older who looks like they need it more. Someone who's, who's panhandling, who doesn't have the energy, you know, who doesn't, who, someone who needs it. I told her I don't need it. But she was looking me up and down and she's going, you sure you don't need it? I'm telling her I don't need it. I don't need it. If I needed three bucks, I'd just go out and run around for a half hour and come back with five bucks, you know, at least. I don't, I don't really need it. But I thanked her. Uh, she, looked, she looked actually hurt, so I felt maybe I should have taken it because it would have made her feel good. But I, I, I'm glad I didn't. I would have felt like a real, a real low life. But yesterday, a guy stops me and just hands me a 20. And when I saw that 20, I was like, I'm taking this 20. I thanked him. I almost kissed the guy. I was so happy. Uh, again, I didn't really need the money. But... I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna turn down a twenty. He looked. He, you know. He obviously was watching me, and he saw how hard I was working, and and having the beard of a month with the gray in it, and looking dirty, and it worked. And it's just so funny because I was thinking about how psychopaths, apparently, when you give them uh, therapy, they become, you know, worse psychopaths. They use what they learn in therapy. Um, to further victimize people, uh, increase their psychopathic skills, and I've never really, I've never been like that. I don't have any. Uh, I mean, this is about as far as I would go in terms of, quote unquote, victimizing someone through manipulation, and I've never done it before. But it was something that I actually learned from all of you guys on YouTube, talking about borderlines, using sympathy uh, as a form of manipulation. And that's really probably why I did it all. I was like, well, let's see if it works. Let's, let's see. I don't have to do anything. I just have to... Anyways, guys, I just wanted to let you know that, uh, you know, if you want to make money and you're a man, you can make 20 bucks a month by growing your beard out. <laughs> um, anyways, things have been really, really, really good here, but I'll tell you something really sick. I'm a very persistent guy, you know. Uh, I wouldn't give up. That's why I became a programmer, because there's no software solution that wasn't able. There was no bug I was not able to fix. And better than that, I was able. I was very good at uh, doing quick, fast, cheap workarounds. So it was where, you know, a, real, a, a programmer who was educated in university would take ten days to properly fix something. Whereas I would take 10 minutes to like jig it around and figure out how just to get the, the website and the money flowing again. So that's why I was really valued a lot of companies that I worked at. Also, because I would do it 24 hours a day. They knew they can call me at four in the morning. I'd be, I'd be more than happy to hop on. So that resiliency has always been with me. But, you know, I know why it was with me. My father, the psychopath, pedophile, only one time in my entire life can I remember viscerally feeling sick to my stomach, confused, and wondering what had just happened. I was at a bar mitzvah. I think I was about seven years old, maybe. And um, they had these huge balloons, these giant oversized balloons. I suppose they were two or three feet <coughs> in diameter. And they were too big for the elevator. That's how big they were. And they were on the first floor where the party was. But it was in a, in a, in a condo building where half of the party was also in the condo on the 25th floor. I wanted one of these balloons. It was fantastic. Uh, I still want one. <laughs> um, I'd never seen anything so big before. And it was full of helium which was uh, interesting, so obviously, to a young boy. I don't think I'd ever seen a balloon float. Remember, this is back in the 70s. So, um, so in order to get the balloon upstairs, I walked up 25 flights because there was no elevator. Couldn't fit the balloon. So it was probably more than three feet in diameter. I mean, it was probably four feet. It was huge. It was like a massive earth ball. I walked it up 25 flights, and when I got upstairs and I went in, everybody was shocked that this little kid would walk up 25 flights. 
for any reason, right? I guess most kids would take an elevator or just sit down there and wait until their father helped them or mother helped them. So my father, so someone, so everyone is going, wow, your kid is really, really something. You really have a winner there. And my sick father grabs me by the face in front of everyone. And he goes, oh, yeah, he's something special. And he looks like this with me. Like he wanted to hurt me. Because this was around the same time that I had probably told uh, the psychologist that he was buggering me in my bed. Um, so by that time, he was probably... Uh, under court order of some kind that he could not be around us or he was un he had just been going through oh no wait it was uh, no yeah 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 it was around that time grade 2 grade 2 so uh, it was a really weird feeling I remember feeling sick to my stomach and I didn't know why and I guess looking back now I know why my father had never touched me in a soft kind of way like that you know he did it in front of people but he but he couldn't do it even it was almost like he wanted to just break me because he's a psychopath he doesn't have softness in him he was just acting for people anyways we get the balloon into the car but it's too big for the car so we have to hold it outside the car so it's on top of us I'm holding it on the inside and there's a it's attached to a ribbon I suppose and the balloons on top anyways after driving for about 60 seconds the wind just pulls the balloon right off flies away I'm devastated and if I remember correctly my mother and father were laughing you know I think my father was laughing he was like oh there it goes my father was a, was a real immature guy I don't think he was evil I think he was just acting like another seven year old you know because when your kids you know balloon flies away that he likes so much and he worked so hard to get uh, another kid would laugh and go, ah, oh, there it goes, you know, a bully kid, you know, a little, <laughs> a little bastard, you know, that's what my father was, you know, I he, everything that he did psychopath, psychopathically, and the same thing with my mother, and the same thing with my ex-girlfriend, it could be uh, attributed to absolute immaturity. All right, that's about it, guys, I'm going to go shave and take a shower, I feel gross.